uh, Dreams of Land, Lands Unseen uh, came out last April, about three years after the Realms of Fire and Death. So when and with what kind of ideas did you start to work on this album? Was it the concept album on Sofia Jablonska from the very beginning? Mm, no. <laughs> I mean, uh, I started like writing music for it probably the next day after we released The Realms of Fire and Death. And when I was like 70% done or so, I just showed all music to Hel and she came up with the idea, the final idea. But I think we knew that this is uh, this will be um, a concept album from the very beginning because all of our albums are concept albums for some reason. It just goes so. We don't do that on purpose, but nevertheless, yeah. And uh, the first concept was about like all sorts of travelers around the world, like world history, you know, Vasco da Gama, Amerigo Vespucci, all those kinds of guys. But uh, when Hel was reading about all these travelers from the past, she discovered uh, Sofia Jablonska and dug into her, and it turned out to be an entire concept of its own. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, the uh, circumstances around making of this album were obviously challenging. How was the making process? I mean, we started as usual. Uh, I think... Yeah, we, we already recorded vocals, keyboards, and guitars at the studio, and then Russia invaded Ukraine. The next day after we finished tracking bass, and for some reason we did everything like on top of demos in back order, only drums were left in the end, and that took some time, and... Uh, that was really hard because at that moment when Russian forces were around Kiev, really close to us, uh, we had really long military curfews. We had curfews that would spend days throughout. So, and uh, the uh, transportation wasn't working in Kiev and the studio we were tracking drums at was on the very different end of the city from where a drummer lives. So yeah, I, I think that was the most challenging um, part of the process itself. But other than that, it was just as usual, but a bit longer. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Would you mind giving like a bit of a background stories for one or two songs? Uh, you mean musically or lyrically? Uh, well, musically is good too. Okay. Um, well, I don't even know, <laughs> to be honest. I mean, yeah, my, but one of my favorite, my favorite uh, songs, but I think most of the band members' favorite songs on the album is Dunes, the, the opener. And... I mean, musically, it's, I would say, the most standard and, uh, yeah, most standard, like, Ignea song, if you regard the previous albums. It's the most, like, ethnic world, oriental, if you must say so. And uh, lyrically, it, it was... It is really tied to the concept of, uh, of the album, which was inspired... Uh, before the war, so it was inspired in part by COVID-19, by the lockdowns and no travels. And we are big fans of traveling. We are big travelers. So, um, I mean, uh, it's it's about homesickness, frankly. Not only this, also opium is, is kind of partially about homesickness. But, yeah, I mean, in these... Uh, in in dunes, Sofia Jablonska would travel in all sorts of sorts of places. Like in this case, it would be northern Tunisia, I believe, or southern Tunisia, and she would see Carpathian mountains in her mirages down there. So yeah, 
Yeah, what about the song you also mentioned, the Opiumist? Uh, it ended yeah, up Opium as the longest the... song on the album. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, musically, it was inspired by, by a Danish band Jotun, and not a lot of people catch the similarities, but it all started with vocals, and then vocals changed, so there's not too much in common right now, but nevertheless, I... I, I was listening to Jotun lots at the, at, at the time. And um, lyrics-wise, it's the same theme of homesickness, but uh, this time expressed through the conversation Sofia Jablonska would uh, have in China while speaking and smoking opium with the old Chinese guy or whatever. And they talked about their respective cultures, their respective backgrounds, and found lots of similar similar things. And that would make Sophia to remember her home and just be homesick. Yeah. Yeah. How was the experience of releasing this album for you? Uh, definitely something new, because uh, this is our first album with Napalm Records. It, I mean, this is our first album on a label at all. And um, lots of people consider this to be like uh, giving up your work to someone else. But in, in reality, it meant even more work because, I mean, labels are demanding for obvious reasons. And there are lots of things uh, they control you over. And in the same time, there are some things you should be uh, looking over wh when label does them. Uh, so yeah, lots of work. Nevertheless, um, a new thing was uh, planning way ahead because I remember when we got the recording of uh, The Sign of Faith, our first album, we just press the CDs and release them. And that's it, because, I mean, there's no point of sending out huge promo PR releases when nobody knows you. But this time, the planning was like half a year or even year ahead. Yeah, uh, that's the major difference. But other than that, um, the biggest thing that impacted the album release was obviously our inability to tour with it because at that time we didn't have the process of uh, getting out men out of the country and then we only like grasped a couple of summer festivals and then the process changed and we had to cancel lots of tours before they were even announced and yeah the i mean there i would say that this album release lacked on the touring side, yeah. Yeah, uh, but you got to tour a bit uh, in Europe last year. Uh, how much work was it to, you know, be able to do this tour? I mean, it's, yeah, the Fear Factory tour. <laughs> I mean, um, the same amount of work because um, getting on this tour is... Uh, is the booking agency thing and our our thing is just come there and play but the problem is uh, we didn't play properly for five years at that moment and then all of a sudden we have a 43 date tour of course we had five or seven or something concerts in ukraine to just get prepared but they didn't help that much and 43 shows in a row is a really hard affair, I, I must say, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, how was the tour in the end for you? Amazing, yeah, absolutely amazing. And uh, we we visited lots of uh, new places like the UK, Ireland, um, Norway. We didn't play, we, we finally played in Finland, uh, which was long overdue with all the shows we already had planned there and cancelled and i mean yeah and uh the response of the people who aren't um 
our listeners per se, like most of them, because that was a Fear Factory tour, obviously, was incredible. Yeah, so lots of new fans, uh, lots of new friends, and lots of new experience as well. Yeah. Yeah, how about this year? How is this year looking? I know there's, of course, all, already Wacken and Summer Breeze in the calendar, but how is it looking yeah. otherwise? Uh, so far, nothing on nothing planned for the spring because uh, we didn't have like all the documents cleared before, and we got them last minute before going on the Fear Factory tour. And as for the spring, it is kind of too late to do that. Uh, but yeah, we have more uh, summer festivals planned, hopefully some other dates during the summer. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward uh, for the autumn because it only makes sense. We have a tour or two in the autumn. Yeah, and we have, I mean, hopefully giant plans for 2025 already. Yeah, as you said, you started writing... Uh the dreams of lands unseen right after the realms of fire and death so are you already writing new music yeah i think i think yeah we have one song finished and we have just a couple more ideas that can be expanded to full songs but uh it all just comes down to inspiration that unfortunately right now we don't have much of because i mean i get inspired by travels a lot and we only can go for festivals and that's it. So no travels for us and traveling within Ukraine even is a bit complicated too. So, but we'll see, we will manage, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, we did the last interview with uh, Ignea a couple of years ago and we kind of had an update on how the situation in Ukraine is looking you know, from the point of view of a band. So would you like to give an update on that? How is the situation in Ukraine from your point of view at the moment? I mean, nothing has changed during this year, frankly. I mean, this there is a red line and it works as a mid-grinder for both sides. And honestly... Ukraine just requires support, 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 like military and financial, just because if Ukraine fails, I mean, Europe comes next. And the Europeans should understand that uh, we are doing like the job on behalf of the entire Europe. If someone uh, doesn't understand Russia and they believe that they have some kind of motion behind them um i mean they were wrong and that's it uh, because they just openly say that they're planning to go to baltic states after ukraine openly bulgaria romania moldova probably even finland i don't know i mean they're mad so uh, thankfully at least these countries i mentioned understand that so yeah <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, we we still feel all the support from Europe and we're incredibly grateful for everything. See the shadows above.